Hello, Majors fans, and welcome to a new little online series we like to call Majors Monthly. I'm Noah Smith, Dylan Baker with me, and we'd like to welcome you here. Uh, we're going to do this probably like once a month, you know, talk to some Majors players, their managers, maybe some coaches, uh, just get the uh, just get the feel of the off season and maybe continue this on into the uh, into the regular season. Dylan, how are you doing? Uh, a little bit of time since we've last uh, seen each other, obviously, with the Majors winning back in game five. How are you doing? I'm doing great. No, it feels good to be talking majors again. It's been too long, though. It's only been, what, about a month since uh, since the majors won the title and we were sitting in the press box at Labatt Park with the, the chance to call that game, which was really special. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this show. It's a great way to keep people invested in the majors and to continue talking about, you know, the team in the offseason as, as they attempt to repeat as champions next year. So we're going to bring on some players, like I said, coaches, and, and overall just some people to talk to, uh, usually about once a month over the offseason. And uh, we're going to start here with Hayden Jaco. He is uh, the Rookie of the Year. We'll talk about that in the IBL. And we'll like to welcome in on this show. Hayden, how does it feel? Has it sunk in yet that you are a champion of the IBL? I would say, yeah, it's, it's definitely settled in. Like the dust has settled. Um, I still say the magnitude of it hasn't really set in because – like obviously we went to the mayor's office and we were recognized at the, the London Knights game and everything, but you know, it, it, it is tough to say what it means to the city, uh, you know, five years down the road from now, or even 10 years down the road from now, you don't know what kind of stories are going to be said from the people that were in the stands that night. So I don't know if the, the whole magnitude of it is set in yet, but I definitely uh, have embraced it. For sure. And what has it been like to see the kind of attention and recognition that you guys have gotten from the city of London from that championship? Oh my God. Uh, like you guys post like the, uh, the all-star recognitions just came out there not too long ago. And just like my Twitter was off the charts, like 14 notifications. It felt like every hour, like from just locals liking it, retweeting it and support, continuing to support the majors even though we haven't been on the field in close to a month now so <clears throat> it's definitely amazing to see like I think the fans are already excited for us to be back next year and they're they're hoping for us to put on a great show again next year so it's it's been it's been quite incredible to, to be embraced by the city so far and you know, continue to be embraced by the city despite the season being over and, you know, going out on top there. Now, this season in London was your first in the Forest City playing for the majors and the pinstripes. What was your first impression like coming into London, coming into Labatt Park, knowing the history and getting to play in front of uh, the largest crowd in the IBL every single Friday night? <laughs> so it's funny you say that. Like, when I moved out here, like, I knew nothing about the IBL. Like, I knew... I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it, was, I hadn't even heard of it really. And then, you know, Roop got a hold of me uh, through the grapevine there. Old college teammate uh, gave him my contact information when we were hurting on bodies uh, with the lack of imports this season. And basically Roop called me and he's like, Hey, do you want to come play baseball? I kind of shrugged it off as in no way, like I'm not playing baseball ever again. Like I tried a men's league when I was back home. Uh, like I just couldn't get excited to play like no shot. And he kept asking, come to a practice, come meet the guys. Nope. Not doing it. Uh, he's like, just come to a practice and, and meet the guys. I was like, all right, fine. So he just kept staying on me and, uh, you know, looking back, I'm, I'm so glad I did because it was incredible to like see the ballpark and the, and the beautiful stadium that it is. And, you know, opening night, I think we were 1500 fans just based off uh, COVID capacity limits there. And it felt, it felt nice to be playing for something again. And it kind of, you know, from my original expectations of it being this like kind of recreational men's league to now it's a very competitive men's league where it's like almost like a semi-pro schedule and you know you're drawing great crowds and playing on beautiful fields that's awesome i know that uh, a lot of guys don't come in with super high expectations for the ibl and then those expectations are surpassed pretty quickly especially in a market like london and now hayden i know you you hold yourself up to a high bar 
could even you have expected the success that you had this year? So coming into this year, like I had absolutely zero expectations for myself. It was one of those years where I know I hadn't touched a baseball bat in close to a year and a half, um, you know, just due to COVID and moving across the country. Like I really no intentions of ever playing again. And, uh, you know, the opportunity came up as we just mentioned there, but going into the year, I had no idea if I was going to hit a hundred, if I was going to hit 250, if I was going to hit 500, I had no idea of, you know, what, what kind of caliber ball it was a and B is just based upon myself and being out of the game for, you know, close to 20 months. I had no idea of how I was going to be able to perform and if I was even in baseball shape, et cetera. So uh, just taking each game kind of day by day and game by game and at bat by at bat, like I just was able to, to piece together a, a, a great year and have, have good success. So I just never, never tried to worry about the day ahead or think about yesterday. Every day was a new day. Every at bat was brand new and just, you know, see what, see what it brought me. Now, a lot of the guys on the majors pitching staff this year and even uh, pitching coach Brent Wales, uh, Rupe Chandler, that they all said that the, the guys loved throwing to you. They loved having you behind the plate. Tell us a little bit about this pitching staff. You know, obviously we had some special arms in De Los Santos, Boone, some guys that just absolutely hucked this year. But tell us about this pitching staff and how fun it was to work with this group of guys. Yeah, the pitching staff was uh, was phenomenal, to say the least. Like, uh, as you mentioned, Owen Boone, De Los Santos, like those guys were top of the league, one, two punch. Then you had Farrington coming out of the pen. You had late guys coming in and Eddie Perez and Luke Kelly and um, Nick Carroll there. Um, so you had just an incredible amount of arms to work with that were all very talented, very talented pitchers. And the biggest thing that I wanted to, to get across to them early on in the season, um, especially the young guys too, like Lund, who was there early and uh, Ambrosio, who's there early. I just wanted them to feel confident on the mound. Um, you know, I didn't know them coming into this year. They didn't know me coming into this year. And I basically just reiterated the fact day in, day out. You know, I don't care what the count is. I don't care who's at, who's at the plate for their team. I want you to throw whatever pitch you're feeling in that moment and that you're going to throw with the, with the most amount of confidence, you know, everything that I put down, like all my signs are simply just suggestions. And if I'm, if you're in a two Oh count, yeah. My, my kind of pacifier and my, my fallback plan is going to be, you know, that fastball, whether it's in or out on the plate, but if you're feeling a change up or a breaking ball, and you're going to throw it with the most confidence, more confidence in your fastball. I, I trust that pitch a hell of a lot more. Right. So <clears throat> I think the biggest thing with them is just like, let them try and try and dictate the game and have as much confidence as they could in their pitches. And then just kind of sit back and learn and, you know, learn who they were as a pitcher. Um, and then eventually by the end of the year with guys like uh, De Los Santos and Boone, like, we're basically on the exact same page because we've worked together for so long. And then once you get on the same page with the guy, it's, it's, it's easy. For sure. Now you guys, this season, Noah talked about how the pitchers love throwing to you. You talk about how you were trying to get the, the, the young pitchers on the mound to feel confident. It felt like you guys had a really tight knit group. What was the coolest part of the run you had this year with this group? I mean, it's tough to say like the, the, the coolest part, but I think the best part was, is just like everybody made showing up to the clubhouse enjoyable, right? Like you walk in there, we got our music going, everybody's just in a good mood and um, you know, wanting team success. The bus rides were always fun. Like there was, there was always good chatter on the bus rides um, and just, yeah, like, when, when a group of guys start to feel comfortable around each other and, you know, your, your, your personalities are allowed to, allowed to shine through and, 
you know, you're allowed, you, you're, you can just be kind of who you are and everybody's just there having a good time. It, it changes, changes the game a lot because now you're, you're out there with a, with a band of brothers instead of just uh, hoping for your individual success. Right. Now this season, uh, kind of talking about that individual success, you batted 379 in the IBL awards you with the rookie of the year. Tell us a little bit about what that honor was like to, to get that award in your first year in the league, obviously is the rookie of the year. So, yeah, that's, that was, that was a, a special one for sure. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, it was tough to put words to like right at the, right at the time. And the, the biggest thing that we always had in mind was the championship. And, you know, that was goal number one, uh, the rookie of the year award for, for hitting 379 ha- handling the, the pitching staff, the way I did, um, you know, it's just a nice little cherry on top, I guess you can say, because as much, as much as we do love team success, you know, individual recognition is uh, we all, we're all out there, uh, you know, we're all competitive beings. So a little bit of individual recognition does, uh, does add a little bit of sweetness to the, to the mix. Yeah. And listen, you deserved all the recognition you got second all-star team rookie of the year this season and obviously IBL champion. Now we know that you hold your personal fitness and and strength in a high regard. What goes into the training regimen, both in season and in the off season for Hayden Jaco? Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. there, Dylan. Uh, first and foremost, lots of calories. There's always a ton of calories on the, uh, on the plate. Uh, so the food bills, food bill is, uh, first and foremost, got to make sure we're, we're eating right and taking care of the body. Uh, second, secondly is, you know, the recovery process. It's it, you can train as hard as you want, but I always say you got to recover harder. Um, so for me, it's, if I'm hitting a two a day workout, which I typically do about five days a week, it's, uh, it's a morning workout followed straight by a cold tub and then, you know, go throughout my day, lots of, lots of, uh, stretching and, and foam rolling throughout the day and then get my body feeling right for that evening, evening workout there. And then just to cap it off a lot of mobility work, making sure that, things are recovering properly um, and ready to go the next day. So a typical day would, would look like a, like a monostructural movement in the morning, whether that's a, a long cardio piece, you know, multiple cardio pieces. Um, and then the evening session is, you know, your heavy, your heavier weights. <clears throat> now that the central nervous system has had a chance to, to wake up and go about the day. And then, a, a nice metabolic conditioning there at the end to make sure we got a nice strong ticker. So that's, that's, that's a typical day there. Typic, I would say in a day I'd be in the gym for about three and a half to four hours, three and a half. And then the other, the other sides of the coin lasts about another 45 to an hour. How about you, Dylan? I could probably sit here and listen to Jaco talk about, his workout plan for, for hours. Right? <laughs> I can learn got, a few things. I can that. see I need, yeah, I need a good workout plan. Say, grab your pen and start taking some notes here because school <laughs> is in session. Oh, I, I, I essentially have it down to, uh, to, to dummy proof. I get, uh, I get all my workouts sent to me on my phone in the morning. It's, it lays it out what I have to do. Some days I wake up and I look at it and I go, are you kidding me? What I got to do what today? <laughs> want to cuss the guy out who, who sends them over to me, but um, you know, that's just, that's the side of the coin too, that, that gets you out of your comfort zone, right? Uh, if you were programming all your workouts and, and you were the one in, in charge, you, you'd never really push yourself. You gotta, that's, I guess that's why people get personal trainers. Cause if I'm just in there doing what I want to do, I'm never going to get better at the things I don't want to do. So, uh, the best, the best thing for it is just, you know, get somebody who, who knows what they're talking about, get them to program it. And, you know, they're going to get you out of your comfort zone real quick. Awesome. Well, uh, we won't take any much more, uh, any more of your time tonight. I know you got lots of stuff to do, uh, packing for a big trip. So we'll let you get, a uh, get ahead of that and, uh, thank you. And, uh, who knows, maybe we'll see you come May. 
Well, we're, we're sure hoping so. I know me, Dylan, but we're sure hoping so. <laughs> hey, like looking at the rookie of the year post there that the majors made on, uh, on Facebook and whatnot, it's, you see all the love from the fans and it, it it's tough not to want to embrace that more. And so coming back is always the question. I know it is for all the guys because uh, the IBL is, is a working man's league. We all have additional responsibilities outside of baseball. It'd be a heck of a world if we could all just wake up and, you know, pick up our bats like we did when we were kids, but you know, we got, we got our additional responsibilities Coda by that time is going to be about a, a full grown dog. So maybe we'll see him out, out of the park a little bit more. And uh, yeah, it's, it was a heck of a year and, you know, I'm sure I'll be chomping at the bit come April. I'm sure I'll be chomping at the bit, <laughs> but uh, no, I appreciate it guys. I appreciate you having me on as the, uh, the first guest of this, of this uh, off season here. And uh, it's because Baker didn't find me after the championship game. <laughs> I told you I'd get that interview. Email. You didn't try. I was <laughs> walking on the outside of the celebration with Coda. You did not try. <laughs> I was scrambling, man. I'm sorry, but we did get the interview in after all. Come on, you got to prepare for success, Baker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you got to prepare for success. You had no plan. You had no plan. <laughs> <laughs> well it's tough to try and sit up there and i know we said we were going to go it's tough to sit up there and try to plan stuff but also you don't want to jinx it or anything be like oh we gotta gotta plan for the championship ceremony but what if we don't have it right so uh, it's tough <laughs> no. but uh yeah we uh thanks for joining us Jay- hayden uh pleasure to have you on and we'll talk again soon of course thank you guys we'll chat soon that was Hayden Jaco talking uh, about a wide variety of things from the rookie of the year to the championship to what next year might look like for him. It was really, really cool to talk to him about, you know, his, his first season with the majors, what it was like to play in London. And uh, we'd like to thank him for coming on the show. We've got another great guest coming up next. Noah. Yeah, we do have another great, uh, great guest coming up. Uh, Hayden was upset that you didn't interview him on the field post game. So we had to make sure that he was the first guest on the new off-season show because he wouldn't have let us live it down otherwise. You know what? I told him after we had wrapped up the broadcast and I was down on the field afterwards with you, he said, Baker, you didn't find me. I said, listen, I was trying. I was, I was busy. I was stressed. And, and I said, you're going to be the first guy we interview during the off-season. If we do something, you'll be the first guy we call. And sure enough, we followed through. Uh, we got to follow through with the promise, right? And uh, what a better guy to kick it off there. He's just full of energy, uh, even at the late hours of the night that we were recording. Uh, but let's get into our next guest here because it is the man that put together this championship team. It is the field manager, co-owner of the London Majors, Mr. Roop Chanderdat. Roop, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to have you on. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. So, Rube, now that you've had the time to reflect, we're a few weeks past the championship game in the IBL season. Take us back to the moment the team won the championship. What went through your head? You know, on the field when we won, I, I can't lie. I, I flashed back to when I first started coaching, you know, in, in 06. Like, just memories, just single memories of, you know, all the effort and work. And you start flashing back from there, and you get back to where we were in 2021. So, it, it happened so quickly, but you start reflecting and then just of, you know, just the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows and uh, just the sticking with it. So there was a lot of emotion. I, I can't lie. I thought, uh, well, when it'll be, it'll be, we won, but no, there was a lot of, I got overcome by a lot of emotions and uh, maybe too much, but you know, that's just part of, I guess, winning a championship. For sure. Now, Rup, what's it been like to see the outpouring of support from really the entire city of London? Because the majors, you know, have a diehard group of fans. But since they've won the championship, we've seen a, a lot of majors players and, and you and Scott as well go to the city of London, to City Hall to get recognized there. Uh, the London Knights honored the team. What's it been like to see all of this support coming from all around the city? You know what? It's been tremendous. Uh, you know what? We have our loyal fans and, you know, I appreciate them. They're behind us, you know whether it's raining out or sunny out there, they're behind us. But it was nice to see London get behind this team and, uh, you know, all of London, you know, like you said, City Hall, the London night. To, you know, London's a winning city and we, I know we needed to win to get everyone behind us. And, you know, we did that, but it's great to see everyone, you know, kind of jump on our ship or our boat and, and you know, be with us and uh, acknowledge what we've done for the city. And uh, like I said, this is not just a win for me or, 
for the players to win for the city of London, our fans, our volunteers. And I sincerely mean that. And I, and you could see it by the outpouring of support we got from everyone in London. Now, coming into this season, obviously, with COVID wiping out last year, it was going to be a different year regardless if we played a full schedule or not. Things were going to be different. But for us to just get back out onto the field and for the majors to take the field, did you have any high expectations for this year? Or is it just to go out there, give the fans some baseball during the summer? And and you know what? Put a good product on the field, like you've said so many times before. You know what? I want to say it's both. You know, I I wanted to get back out there and play for the fans, for the players. You know, guys miss it. I missed it. But if you know me, every time we step on that field, you know, I want to win. And I wanted to build a team that could win a championship. And I I wanted guys, you know, coming out of COVID, I wanted guys that were hungry. And I I think that hunger came from a lot of the guys we brought back that, you know, left the majors for whatever reason, work or whatever reason they had. So those guys were hungry. That legacy classic game might have just went kind of, you know, everyone thought it was just a game to keep the history and the heritage. It was. That was the most important. But it gave a lot of guys, I miss this game. I wish I was part of that. And that's when guys started reaching out and saying, you know what, I want to be part of that. I said, it's too late to be part of that. But, you know, if you really want to be part of the majors next year, you got to show me you want to be there. So I think that legacy classic helped. But to answer your question, you know what, it was good to get baseball back on the field and get the players playing the fans behind us. But also, you know what? I wanted to win. I wanted to make this a special year for all of us. And, uh, you know, we end up accomplishing that goal. Going back to, to that hunger that you were just talking about there, you, you built a team that was surrounded by, it was all veterans, really. There were guys that had been there that had done it before, but had fallen short. And there were times where you've fallen short in your managerial career with the majors, but now you finally get that big championship. At what point, did you know that this team was special? You know what? And I say that and I, from, we'll call it right from the start. And why I say that right from the start, it was their work ethic. You know, we were working out, you know, one week we're working out next week. We can't because of COVID restriction. Three weeks later, we're working out and guys were trying to do what they could on their own. So I knew we had some, something special. If you were allowed to be with two people, with a cohort, they were going out to play catch or hit together, two guys. So following the rules, I see guys that wanted to put in the effort. And then once we were able to have team practices, no one was missing it. Everyone was there. Everyone was working hard. You know, wasn't, I had to force them to be there or force them to work hard. They wanted to be there. They wanted to work hard. So I knew we had a good group. And then quickly they bonded. You know, we always have a tight clubhouse. That's one thing about the majors. We have a tight clubhouse, but these guys bonded really quickly and gelled really quickly together. One of the big rookies that the majors had this year was catcher Hayden Jacob. And we actually just talked to him before you on the show. And he mentioned how he wasn't quite sure how this season was going to go. It was his first year in London. Didn't know much about the majors. Didn't know much about the league. But like you talked about, that camaraderie, the, the locker room, that's what kept him coming back. And that's what got him so excited to get to the ballpark every Friday night and play some baseball. And, and I think that just speaks to what, what you've done here over your career and what you and Scott have done uh, since you took over the majors is you make it a place that players want to come and they want to be on Friday nights. Definitely. You know what? We start with any guys that come in here. I, I always tell them, I go 99.9% of the guys will leave here. And whether it's one year, five years, 10, 20 years down the road, they'll say that's one of the best summers, three summers they had in their life. And I keep hearing that. It's when I took over, I wanted to build something, you know, and it sound, might sound cliche, a family where guys can come in and they feel these guys are their best friends. They're part of the family, you know, a baseball family. They care about one another. Have we had some bad apples? Sure we have. But, you know, we, we kind of, I kind of get rid of those guys. And like you said, guys come in. They feel part of this. And Hayden wanted to come back to that clubhouse. Everyone wants to come back to that clubhouse. They want to be there Friday night. They want to play. But more importantly, they want to be together and they want to win for each other. I talked about team, 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 and I preach that no one's bigger than the team. And uh, you know what? The guys believe in that. And uh, you know what? They stick up for each other both on and off the field. And they have a bond and you become part of that major's family. Yeah, and despite the fact that the IBL is not like some other professional leagues where you're spending every day together, it's a grind, you know, for a full 162, they say, in Major League Baseball. The IBL, there are jobs outside of, of baseball, and so these guys have to stay together and they have to really do it for each other and, and bond in the time that they do spend uh, at the ballpark. So in your time with the majors, it's been a really key part of the success that the team has had, and now that all culminated in a championship this season. 
Um, looking at the season as a whole, what was your favorite part of the run you guys had? You know what? The, the favorite part, it's, it's always been the same. I, I want to say whether we win or not, it's being with the guys on the field. You know, once we're on the field together, I think everything goes away. I always talk to guys, you know, guys come in and had a tough day at work, tough day with their family, whatever happens. I said, once you step on that field, forget about everything else. Let's be little kids. Let's be boys that want to play baseball. And I use the term boys because, you know, I always say re reference back why you played this game, because you had fun, you enjoy, you love it. So every time we step on the field, I tried to get them to wash away their problems, their issues, and let's play baseball. And to me, that will always be the best part of the game, you know, win, lose, or draw. It's always being on the field with the guys and, and whether it's practice or game, just, just going out on the ball field and playing baseball. Now, quickly, before we go on and talk about some of the off-season plans, I want you to, to, to tell us about an import guy that you brought over a decade ago. We don't even have to say his name. You know who we're talking about. Uh, how good was it to see him win a championship? The city loves him, and he's been here for over a decade. You know what? Uh, Cleveland Brownlee, I mean, this goes without saying nicest man around you know nothing about baseball nothing about hitting a ball over a fence so far he's just a nice man a genuine man anyone that meets him that's the thing you get he's a he's a nice guy Cleveland and I have a special bond we always will you know from day one when I brought him here um, I knew he was something different he was he's polite he's courteous whether Cleveland hits a home run goes over four he's the same guy you know especially to the fans to me to everyone else and uh, you know we're lucky to have Cleveland here in London uh, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that'll go down, you know, in history forever. Like yeah, when you talk, you talk, our kids talk, whoever talks about baseball in London, they'll talk about Cleveland Brownlee. As we all know, London Knights are a big thing in town, but you couldn't, you could put Cleveland, stack him up with any London Knights player, any lightning player. And everyone knows who Cleveland Brownlee is. You know, we all joke he could run from air for sure. He could popularity contest Cleveland, Cleveland will win hands down over any. Yeah, Cleveland's left a major imprint on society here in London. He's loved by so many fans because the moment you talk to him, you just, the first thing that hits you is his infectious, you know, enthusiasm for the game of baseball, the joy that he has. He's just a really good guy to be around. Uh, final question from me for you, Roop. Has the offseason work already begun to try and repeat as champions next year? Yeah, you know what? We're, I'm in the infancy stages. I, the off season is always the hardest work. You know, I, I tell everyone, you know, I kind of do it in isolation. And uh, there's, you know, there's a reason that I, I want to build a team. So it takes a lot of work. You know, I want to reach out to the right guys, get the right players. So I've already started. You know, I know everyone wants us to repeat. I want to repeat. But the bigger thing, I just want to make sure we have a competitive team that plays our way that the city will be proud of. And if we put that team on the field, you know, we have a chance to be competitive and we have a chance to be at the top of the standings. And then the byproduct hopefully is a championship. So definitely I do want to repeat. And, uh, but more importantly, I, I just got to make sure I get the right guys back and the guys that want to be here and, uh, and want to compete again and play the right way. And I said any better ourselves group. Uh, thank you for joining us. We know you got a busy off season ahead of you, uh, both with the Kings and then getting the majors ready to hit the field in May. So uh, enjoy it. Take some time. You make sure you have the right players ready for May and uh, we'll be ready to see you there. Thanks guys. You guys did a great job this year. I really appreciate all your help. All right. Thanks Roop. Once again, Roop Chander data, uh, a 2021 IBL champion. That's something that he's been looking forward to for a long time. Dylan. Yeah, Roop's been working for this moment for a very long time, ever since he took over as, uh, as co-owner of the majors and then as manager, as GM. Roop really does it all within the organization. He's a major part of building this team. He recruits players. He signs them. He puts them on the field, puts the lineups together. He's, a, he's an integral part of this majors organization, really. Uh, from the top down, Roop, Roop plays a big role in the success of the team. And we're very grateful that Roop took some time uh, out of his busy schedule to talk to us about this year and about how special it was. And, and Roop also mentioned, you know, it's not just about him. It's not just about the team. It's about the whole city, the fans, the volunteers, the staff. And uh, it was very nice of him. So thanks once again to Roop. Yeah, thanks to Roop and thanks to Hayden Jaco, both of those guys joining us here on our first show here of Majors Monthly. And we'll be back next month as well. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel down there below and uh, make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can uh, know when we post all our new videos and some more guests coming up next month. So thank you for listening and watching with us uh, this month. And we'll see you again next time here on Majors Monthly.